Hi everyone, it's uh, Glenn from Astrobloke. Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about the Skywatcher AZ GTI. Um, I've had this mount for over a year now. Um, I moved to it from a Star Adventurer. And the main reason I moved to this was uh, it's ex extremely similar in size. I think it weighs 0.3 of a kilogram more than the Star Adventurer. So not heavy at all but it's got m many more features. So it's a fully go-to um, mount, and with a firmware upgrade, actually becomes an equatorial mount. So a few little uh, modifications required. You've got to add a counterweight bar and a wedge, which you can use the ones that come with the uh, Star Adventure. You just need to get um, an adapter to change the size of the thread at the top here. But um, I've actually bought a bar that from AliExpress, which goes with the AZ GTI and allows you to do counterweight. Um, I've got a upgraded ADM saddle on the top, so I improved it a bit more there. Um, but this is a really nice piece of kit. Um, there's a few bits of software that are required to change it into an EQ mount. And there's a, a couple of other bits of software you need to operate it, but they're all quite simple to uh, use and do. So I'm going to show you how to um, download the software to change this mount. I'm going to show you the uh, programs you need to operate the mount. And then I've got some video of me actually outside at night doing a polar alignment with sharp cap and then actually getting this mount to guide with PHD2 and uh, um, actually guiding the scope and bringing in some actual uh, subs on the Pinwheel Galaxy. So hopefully the information will be of help to you if you've struggled with getting one of these working or you're interested in something like this and seeing how it does work in the field. So um, right, we'll just get to it. What I'd like to show you now for the AZ GTI is the software that you're going to need to control the mount and also the software required to change the mount into an EQ mount. So we need to go to Skywatcher to their uh, main website and you'll notice they have a support part and there you've got um, software and firmware. If you scroll down on the list on the left you've got the SynScan app this is what you'll use to actually control the mount. And this can be loaded onto an Android device, either phone or tablet, or an iOS device. It can also be loaded onto Windows 10, which is what I have it loaded onto on my laptop, and that's what I control the mount with. If you are using it with the uh, laptop and you're going to be adding uh, PHD2 and guiding, you will need the ASCOM driver as this uh, acts as the go-between to uh, let you talk with ASCOM uh, appliances that are also attached. So you would download this as well. So turning it into an EQ mount, we need the motor controllers. So the first thing you need to get is the actual uh, loader for the motor controller firmware, and it's the one with Wi-Fi written on it. So if you click on download, it will come up and it normally comes up as a compressed file so you would extract all and I've loaded them before so I'm just going to replace them in there thing and there's your there's your loader to actually put the program in so I can close that down now that you've got the loader you need the actual firmware to put into the mount and if you come down you'll see um, this AZ GTI right arm and this talks here about how you it, that um, this is for turning the mount into an equatorial mount and it makes a disclaimer that it is not intended for astrophotography please don't worry about this um, it is experimental um, but it works absolutely fine and uh, I've been using this for over a year without any issues at all so uh, please don't be afraid. And anything that you do download into the mount is reversible. So at, I'm gonna download the latest version, which is 3.26. So click that to download. I'm gonna say extract all and extract that as well into my downloads. 
Okay, and that should be all of the information that I need. 3.2 was the version before. So if I close the internet now and go to my downloads, you'll see here the two zip files and here's the two open files that have been extracted. Let me just uh, make that a little bit wider. So we want the firmware loader. If I double click on that and double click on that, it should bring up the loader and it's just making sure that I want to run it. There it is. Now what I'm going to do now is turn the AZGTI on, so the Wi-Fi is being transmitted, and I need to connect this PC to that Wi-Fi. So I look here, and there's SynScan. Whoops, didn't need to click on properties. Right, I'm connected to the SynScan, so now, if I actually click MC version here, it will try and connect to the mount and tell me what motor controller is actually already downloaded, and it's 3.26. I'm still gonna load the new one in so you can see it happening. So when you want to download the new firmware to the uh, mount, you just click browse on here, and then you'll go to your downloads and you'll click on the motor controller firmware this one here the one not the firmware loader the firmware itself and there it's the file three point the three two six and we say open and the files there and now what we can do is click update and what will happen is it will now put or attempt to put the uh, new motor controller into the mount if for some reason it fails just try again uh, you may need to reconnect the internet or something um, but it will load in and hopefully this will go first time and it's all looking good and it's saying update complete turn power off so if I turn the power off now what I can then do is I can then turn the power back on the AZ GTI make sure I'm connected to the SIN scan which it still is that's good and then I can say what version are we running and there we go 3.26 a5 so we now have the updated motor controller firmware into the AZ GTI so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to be outside and I'm going to show you how the mount runs with uh, Nina and uh, being guided with PhD2 Okay, so the uh, little shower has passed now, which is good, so we can uncover everything. And uh, we've got a bit of a cloud over Polaris by the looks of it, but it is moving east, so it should be clear very shortly. But it's obviously going to cause us a small problem for the polar alignment, so there may be a short delay, but uh, we'll see how we get on. So. First things first, we need to set up the polar alignment. So you've got a few options. Uh, you could either, if you fit a polar scope to the side of the AZ GTI, you could use that. There is a polar alignment uh, using a drift on a guide on a certain star that you could use that's in the SINSCAN app. Um, and I'm gonna use my preferred method which is um, sharp cap. So I'm roughly pointing towards uh, Polaris at the moment. I'm not sure how level my my rig is. I'm just having a look. It looks not too bad. I'm not going to go over the top because this is really just a main demonstration of how we get things working. So I'm going to call up. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to call up Sharp Cap to start with. I can't actually visually see any stars up there, but that doesn't mean that the cameras won't pick them up because they're a lot more sensitive than my eye. So 
there we go it can see somewhere a little bit you can see they're behind clouds because of uh, what it's doing there so what we do is we get sharp cap looking at the stars we'll see if it's got enough uh, we'll go to tools and we'll go to polar align and we're just going to get a, a polar alignment going so this would be the first stage So I'm just going to push the sensitivity up just a little bit on the uh, gain just to see if it could just pick up a few more stars. Okay, and it's happy that it's got enough and it wants me to do uh, the rotation. So we click next and then what we do now is rotate the axis by 90 degrees, either left or right. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees to the left, just past it. Make sure that the RA is locked back up so it can't move. And we need to wait now for Sharp Cap to look at the uh, new polar alignment, which it's done, and it's got what well, it's saying four degrees 30 minutes out. So that's quite a long way. So left, there's quite a lot left and down so I'm going to give this a on this top here I can actually give this quite a big turn um, and we'll just see how that get that a bit closer and then we'll go for the finer adjustments when we're closer so we're looking at 47 minutes at the moment so we've got a little bit more of a turn I can do there and then I can tighten up the nuts on the top of the extension pillar so it doesn't turn anymore okay that's good Right, so we're 10 minutes, 10 seconds left, so we've got what we got here, 25, sorry, 10 minutes, so we've got 25 minutes down, so let's do that first. So we'll start to get that close. Oh, I went too far already, look at that. Up a little bit more. And we'll do a bit of the left now. Uh, we got up left five minutes still, so we give it another bit of a left, and it's already hit excellent. So that's not bad. So we could sit here now, um, do some very fine tweaking. You can spend as much time on the polar alignment as you want. Um, good is good enough. Um, excellent is a really good place to be and if you want to try and get it to, to zeros you can um, you can spend a lot of time on it but uh, we're just going to get it nice and close so we're happy with it very small movements we'll just get it a bit closer than that we've got excellent and good And that, that'll do me, 21, 13 seconds, that's good, that's good, we'll go for that. So, you can spend a long time trying to dial it in, but at this focal length, it's not really necessary. So, that's everything connected up, and we've got a polar alignment. We can now close sharp cap. The next job is to actually turn the GTI unit on. And you should get a red flashing light to tell you that it's on. And that shows it's doing that. And it, what it does then is it's giving out its own Wi-Fi signal. So we're now going to look for that Wi-Fi signal. And there it is there, SIN scan. And we connect to it. There won't be any internet. You'll get the symbol here to say there's no internet connection. And what we want to do now is open the SIN scan mobile app. Once it's open, we asked it to connect, and we actually want it in the equatorial mode, because we're using it as an EQ mount. From the last uh, time that it was used, it saves the hibernation uh, data. We can restore that, so it will keep the mount as it was from before. Okay, so here we can actually start to control the mount. So if I wanted to, I could actually start slewing the mount, and we could just use the app. We don't want to do that, we're going to actually control the app through Nina. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell that to go back home. A 
go back to the main page and then what I'm going to do is just literally minimize this so it's out the way okay now I'm going to launch Nina and when you set up Nina when you get to the telescope part I'm going to show you what you would look for for this mount so I'm just going to load the profile because it's all in there and before I connect anything when you're under the equipment tab and you go to telescope and under the settings you would actually come down here you can see that it lists all the different ASCOM drivers you want the SIN scan app driver for this mount because this works from the SIN scan app right and uh, I'm going to click connect and connect all and everything's connecting nicely telescope's connected and now it's doing PHD2 and it's going to connect the PHD2 through the guider to the mount which means that you'll get pulse guiding commands for your guide camera and if you look under, if I stop PHD2 when you set this up under the wizard what will happen is you can you get your camera but under the mount again you have SIN scan app driver by ASCOM okay let's just uh, get that rotating so again you can operate the mount from here and that would allow you to um, move it about and you can park it I'm just going to chill the camera for a moment Okay, so I'm just <clears throat> so this is the um, sequence for the Pinwheel Galaxy. I'm just going to take off the autofocus because um, we just want it to um, run to the object. And I'm just going to take that off there. And I'm just going to put this on a luminance, and we'll just say uh, 60 seconds, so that we can just see this running through so the first thing we're going to do is uh, push play and what will happen is it'll check the camera's called and if it is it will now slew towards the pinwheel galaxy what will happen then is it will take an image and it will attempt to plate solve it and this is the beauty of the az gti is that you haven't got to find the target it will find the target for you using plate solving. Now the plate solver I have set up on this is ASTAP um, there are others that work as well, plate solve 2 is quite good um, but ASTAP works brilliantly so I've got that set up on here at the moment okay so it's um, telling me to rotate the camera to get the framing the same as what I had so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to um, turn the rotator off um, because that will just cause us a little bit of a problem at the moment so just bear with me I've just got to go into the rotator disconnect it and then I'm just gonna close that and I'm just gonna stop the sequence for a second I should have turned the rotator off so I've got center and rotate so I want to get rid of that and just change that to center so because i'm not doing imaging tonight we are literally just demonstrating how this works so we've got center as the next one so with with nina you can stop the sequence wherever it is if you need to redo this bit you can refresh it and it will just go back to the last one that was done so i'll push play now it will just look to center to slew and then it will look to centre so what it will do is it will start the plate solving uh, procedure again but now it will not have that rotation built in um, so normally I would manually rotate until it was correct and then it would carry on from there it's really good especially if you're doing a mosaic or you're imaging something night after night it means you're going to get your framing exactly the same every night which is great okay so it's just doing a little slew and it's just getting everything centered up it's now plate solving let's see if it's got it now it's quite happy so now it's starting to guide okay my last calibration I did was too far from the equator and it's saying that it's not happy with it so but we'll we'll just leave it as it is at the moment 
and it's starting to guide and it's starting to expose so there you can see a little bit of a movement on that star there let's have a look not looking too bad at all the RA has just completely dived off the page for some reason that definitely needs a calibration doesn't it it moved it back quite nicely there the deck aggression is quite high the RA aggression doesn't look high enough for me I think I'll take that back to 60 so it's running itself through an autofocus routine so it was unhappy with the um, HFR trend I've got it if it goes 5% out to do a refocus and so that's what it's doing at the moment so it's going to try and try and push that focus a bit better so what I might do is I might actually do a calibration on this and try and get this mount recalibrated so we can get it guiding properly so just bear with me we'll let this refocus occur first of all and then what we'll do is we'll have a look at a calibration so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to stop the sequence it's done an autofocus routine and I'm going to get this calibrated so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the guiding for now make sure it's not guiding I'm actually going to go to the scope controls and I'm going to point it to the, more towards the equator So we need a bit of a south, south slew. The equator's that way. Okay, at the moment I'm looking at the shed, I do believe. So we're just going to, uh, not that way, this way. And we've got a bit of sky now bit of cloud over there but we should be okay so we just get it guiding and we do shift guide and it's going to go through a calibration process okay I don't think the uh, calibration was the best in the world but we'll see what's happening with the guiding Okay, well, could be worse, it don't look too bad. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually uh, refresh the guiding, refresh the centering and refresh the slew and push play and what it will do is it will go back to those stages, go back to the pinwheel. And what I'm hoping is now the guiding will be a little bit better than it was earlier. There we go, it's quite a clean picture. So obviously it's got to go through its uh, plate solving, it won't try and centre it this time. Because I took centre out, uh, sorry it won't try and rotate it this time, it will centre it, that's what I want it to do. My apologies for the external camera ending abruptly there, uh, unfortunately the battery ran out. But as you can see here, the guiding now after the um, new calibration has been done has settled down completely. It's sitting at 0.68 at the moment and um, yeah, guiding like that is really nice. I also turned on the uh, a multiple star guiding which helps a lot as well. So um, we're under one arc second, which is ideal. Uh, we're sitting at 0.8 at the moment, which I'm very happy for with this uh, scope. And at a focal length of 360 millimeters, that's gonna give me uh, very acceptable images. So I can see there the exposing, we've got another five seconds to go and we'll see a luminance sub 
a 60 second luminance sub of uh, the Pinwheel Galaxy and um, we'll just go and have a look at that a nice little uh, satellite trail through there as well but as you can see the stars are nice and round no problems there at all um, Pinwheel looks good you can even see the uh, neighboring uh, galaxy there to the left which is nice um, so everything's looking good we've got an HFR come back on that one at 3.69 so that's nice too we'll have a look at the uh, the next sub as well and we'll just keep an eye on the guiding make sure that stays nice and steady just having a, another look at the next field yep yeah, that's really good that image is absolutely fine I'm really happy with that so as you can see that's going to bring back good images let's have a look at the guiding yep it's still at uh, 0.8 so I'm really happy with that there's uh, plenty of uh, corrections being made up there um, so on my next outing what I may do is I will run a guide assistant and see if there's any adjustments that could improve things and I'll more than likely bring the aggressiveness down especially on the deck there um, and try and uh, get that to smooth out as much as possible. I really do hope that the video has been of help to you. As always, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. So if you wanna ask me anything, please stick it in the comment section below. I will get back to you. I do have another video, which I'll put a link above me, which is actual full strip down um, service uh, and regrease of this mount. I didn't do a hyper tune by changing all of the bearings and everything, but if I ever need to service this again, I will be doing that. So um, it's just a case of really, rather than just replacing the uh, bearings that you take out, which is in that video and regreasing them, you just replace them with new ones. But uh, there's not many bearings in here, so uh, it wouldn't be a big job to do. All that's uh, left to say is I wish you all clear skies, and until next time, take care.